If you follow my channel, you probably know that I love earbuds with an open ear design and in this video I will show you my top 5 picks. We got a lot to cover so let's dive in. Hi everyone, my name is Andy and you're watching Andy's Tech Tone. I'm going to give you all the details you need to know about each of the 5 open earbuds one by one first and towards the end of the video I'm going to give you some mic samples too. And while in this comparison I will only feature the creme de la creme of the open ear market, if you think that these premium offerings are beyond your budget, then check out my other video where I test and compare no less than 6 affordable options. And speaking of affordable options, let's start today's discussion with the one more Fit S50, which only costs about 120 bucks as of making this video. So from a best value point of view, we got our winner already. But the relatively affordable price tag would not mean much if it wasn't backed with quality and performance across the board. And that's something the S50 can deliver too. In fact, these earbuds offer a few unique features that none of the others can. There is the Qi wireless charging support, the low latency game mode in the smartphone app, and the wear sensors for automatic play and pause. The S50 also comes with the highest level of protection against the elements, thanks to its fully waterproof IPX7 rating. The S50 earbuds are also lightweight and compact, only the shocks open fit can beat them in that regard. Wearing them all day long presents no comfort issues, apart from maybe a slight pressure at the back of my ears, thanks to the super snug ear hooks. However, that pressure kind of dissipates over time, so it causes no real problems for me in the long run. And those tight ear hooks, along with the support you can get from the silicone sound loops, can give you a solid and secure fit for all sorts of exercise. Those sound loops also help with directing the sound into your ear canals, reducing the sound leakage and again, it's only the shock's open fit that does a slightly better job at that. In terms of connectivity, we got Bluetooth 5.3, AAC, SBC, multipoint and single bud mode. And even though multipoint is platform agnostic, you cannot switch between previously connected devices using the app, unlike on some other buds such as the Oladance, the Soundcore or the Shox. The smartphone app itself gives you 12 EQ presets with no manual settings, you get to play with the Smart Playback aka Autoplay Pause and there is the low latency switch too. The custom touch control settings in the One More app are limited, as we only get the double and the triple tap action to use, so out of the 6 basic functions, which are play, pause, volume up and down, track forward and backward and voice control, there is only 4 available at any given time. The smart sensors can soften the blow, but I would rather have a single tap or a tap and hold added to that list of tapping actions. The bots cannot be turned on and off without using the battery case, which means that you will need to carry the whole package with you all the time. But with that battery case you can get 38 hours of total playtime, while the bots will last up to 11 hours on a single charge. And while this is a great performance, it's only good enough for a third place position in this group. 5 minutes of quick charging will give you an extra 2 hours of use time, which is again somewhat average, but the one more buds are the only ones in this test which can be charged wirelessly and that might be a deal breaker for some. Onto the sound of the buds, it is open, clean, transparent and airy. The base extension is not the best, but the precise imaging and the wide soundscape together make these buds one of the most open and airy sounding of the bunch, without the highs ever getting too harsh or sibilant. The mids are pushed forward in the mix, and that character makes the S50 perfect for listening to podcasts on the go, as speech intelligibility is top of the class. A touch of warmth and heft could improve the impact in the bottom octaves, and in terms of maximum volume, the S50 is one of the rather modest ones in this test, but at least we get a consistent and predictable sound signature across all volume levels, and as you will see later on, this is something that cannot be said about some other buds in this test. Next up is the ARC 2 Sport from Clear Audio. The earbuds look the part, the build quality is top notch and you get that premium feel when holding the buds in your hands. You will also feel the substantial weight of more than 14 grams, but that has no effect on comfort thanks to the optimal distribution of that mass. We also get a unique hinge on the speaker unit, which allows for some rotation, making the fit as secure as possible across different ear shapes and sizes. The IPX5 rating is only average, but that's still plenty enough for the average cyclists and runners amongst us. The clear audio buds cost around $160 as of making this video, and on a feature per dollar basis, the ARC 2s are the winners of this test, even if some of those features are more useful than others. 
the UV lights inside the battery case for example definitely belong in the useful bucket as they can sanitize your earbuds by killing some bacteria. Then there is the Snapdragon sound chip on board, with its support for Aptex lossless, Bluetooth LE audio, multipoint and single bud mode, which is not only useful but it also makes the clear audio buds the most future proof and of course the winners of the connectivity category too. On the other hand, the step counter, the sedentary reminder and even that anti-loss reminder in the app seem to be a bit gimmicky with not much use for me. And in the Clear Plus app, besides all that, there is an EQ with 6 presets and a 5-band manual setting, an auto power off timer and settings for the built-in motion sensors which enable certain shaking and turning motions to handle phone calls or change tracks. And speaking of controls, nothing is missing here as the touch panels themselves are big, easy to use and quick to react and the app will allow us to remap the single, the double and the triple tap actions. We also get to use a double tap and hold for volume and long tap for voice controls, so these are by far the best earbuds when it comes to controlling your media, playback or phone calls. Multipoint works across all platforms, but a menu with the previously connected devices is missing from the app, but then there is the single bud mode and the option to turn the earbuds on and off independently and without the need for the case. And speaking of the case, it's rather huge, but it has a slim profile and the lid opens all the way up to almost 180 degrees flat, giving you easy access to the buds. There are the UV lights again and the 35 hours of total playtime along with the 10 minutes of quick charging, which can yield the buds an extra hour of use. What's missing though is wireless charging and the buds can only last about 8 hours on a single charge, which is a touch below average in this class. What's way above average, however, is the overall dynamics and volume we can squeeze out from the drivers in the ARC 2. These are easily the loudest and the most powerful earbuds in this bunch. The lower registers are tight, textured and lean, and we got quite a powerful bottom end punch too. Extension is not as good as on the Shox Open Fit, but at least we got a clean distortion-free output regardless of volume. The mids again might be a touch less forward and open as let's say on the One More or on the Shox, but it's not that far off. Extension towards the top end is a touch limited as we get a slight roll off in the higher octaves, but the treble is detailed and sparkly enough. The sound stage could be a touch wider with more air around the individual elements, but the dynamic yet non-fatiguing sound is really a pleasure to listen to in the long run. And it's the Oledance OWS Pro that always springs to mind whenever I can hear the two words long run and pleasure in one sentence. Well, it might be three words, but it doesn't change the fact that the OWS Pro are my absolute favorites as far as long-term comfort. These earbuds also look extremely good, the build quality is truly premium and so are the materials being used all around. But this devilishly handsome package comes with a high price tag of $230, which makes the OWS Pro the most expensive offering by far. However, it's not only good looks, a secure fit and second to none comfort, but also some class leading properties that we get for our money. For one, there is the 16 hours of single charge playtime, the 58 hours of total battery life and the 15 minutes of quick charging, which can provide the buds with enough juice for another 6 hours of use. And these numbers make the OWS Pro a winner in the battery department. Wireless charging would have been nice, but it seems to be a generally neglected feature in the open ear segment. What's usually not neglected in the category, however, is adding weather protection to the buds, but the IPX4 rating we get here is the bare minimum you want when it comes to using the OWS Pro outside, so Oladance could have done a better job there too. The wireless chip on board supports the AAC and the SBC audio codecs only, but we get a platform agnostic multipoint use feature with the option to manage our previously connected devices from the app. There is no low latency mode, but lip sync is perfect with movies and in general I found the connection to be rock solid. And even though you probably have deep pockets if you can afford the OWS Pro, it doesn't mean that you want to carry around the second largest case all the time in those pockets of yours, so the separate power button on each earbud will come in handy as it means that you can turn them on and off independently and without having to use the case. But as long as you are happy with its size, you will find using the case easy thanks to the springy hinge and the trouble-free access to the buds. 
However, I'm not quite sure how you will find those force touch controls. I mean, we got all the functionality we need, with all the flexibility we can ask for in terms of remapping those functions in the app, so there is nothing wrong with that. But that little squeeze the buttons require to register a tap makes using them a bit less comfortable than, let's say, the ARC 2. Sure, these buttons work more reliably in adverse conditions than regular touch controls, and the OWS Pro ranks higher than most other buds in this test, but your experience might vary depending on your use case. Onto the smartphone app, it offers a bunch of features such as a volume balance slider, three EQ presets with an 8-band manual setting, the multipoint menu, or the custom control settings. There is also the focus mode, which is some sort of a noise cancelling and it works okay if only a bit hectic. The hearing protection limits your exposure to high volumes over longer periods of time, and with the body a bot feature, you can connect two standalone bots and make them one set. And while speaking of the app, let's not forget to mention the Oladance button, which can be used on a group ride as an intercom, or on solo rides as a remote controller for your media playback. And talking about media playback takes us smoothly to that smooth and sweet sound of the OWS Pro. The bass has a good kick, it's tout and impactful, but it might be a touch less controlled than that of the R2 or the Shox. The mids are rich sounding, but maybe a touch too sweet or even dark for my taste. I don't really mind it with music, but it's a disadvantage with podcasts or YouTube videos, as all human voices get an extra heft and a bit of a rumble. The treble is also a tad too smooth and not quite extended or airy enough, making the OWS Pro sound more closed in, with a slightly compressed sound stage when compared to the wider image of both the Shox or the One More. However, the sound opens up a little at higher volumes, thanks to the slightly tapered bass, which has a positive impact on speech intelligibility, and it also helps with avoiding distortions in the bottom octaves. And now let's see the Shox Open Fit, which cost 180 bucks, and that puts them somewhere halfway between the Oladance and the One More. The Shox earbuds are the most compact with their small head units and flimsy little ear hooks, and these are also the most lightweight of the bunch, with their weight of 8.3 grams each. But even that small size and weight makes the Open Fit only a close second behind Oladance, as far as long term comfort. We get a secure grip as well, and while the fit is not uber tight, it's absolutely snug enough for running or strolling around in town. The IP54 rating along with the double layer steel mesh in front of the speakers will provide you with protection against sweat, rain and splashes, and to some extent dust as well. All in all, wearing these buds is safe and comfortable across all scenarios, be it indoors or outdoors. The carry case comes with a top-notch build quality and a springy hinge on the lid, and while it's a bit on the thick side, its overall footprint is still the smallest of them all. However, becoming a lightweight champion requires some serious caloric deficit, which translates into a rather poor performance both in terms of total battery life and single charge playtime. It is only 28 hours and 7 hours respectively. The 5 minutes of quick charging is also average and we get no wireless charging support here either, so the last place in this comparison is kind of deserved. And when it comes to wireless connectivity, it's only the multipoint support and the manual switch in the app that saves the open fit from ending up in last place again. What we got is a Bluetooth 5.2 chip that supports the AAC and the SBC audio codecs, multipoint and single bud mode. But there is no low latency mode and the earbuds cannot be turned on and off without using the carry case. The multipoint menu in the app on the other hand enables you to switch between previously connected devices, and that's something not all the buds in this test can do. As for the controls, we got touch sensitive panels, which can register a double tap and a tap and hold action. And while the reaction times are quick, and we got some custom settings in the app too, we cannot have all the functions at the same time. We have to choose between track or volume controls, and that's less than ideal. We don't have smart sensors either, so automatic play and pause is off the table too, and all that again pushes the Shox earbuds down to the bottom of my rankings. The smartphone app is a touch better thanks to its multipoint menu, the custom controls, the sound profile presets and the 5-band manual EQ, but still, the others simply offer more features and options. Onto the sound quality of the buds, the ultralight carbon fiber composite drivers can deliver a hefty bass with a great punch and some of the best extension towards the sub bass. The midrange is outstandingly rich and very well articulated. The upper mids are ever so slightly lifted and it adds some extra dynamics and presence to vocals and most instruments. 
the treble comes through with clarity and detail, the sound stage is wide and spacious, while the imaging is as precise as it gets in this class. The only caveat to the sound is the distortion in the bass that creeps in to ruin the whole experience at higher volume levels. But even though the open fit is not the loudest of them all, the buds are plenty loud already at around 60% where you can still get a clean sound. But if you are either a volume addict or if you use the open fit outside in noisy environments a lot, then you will better get used to the distorted bass at higher volumes. Pulling down the bass in the EQ can help, but then you lose some of that warm and full-bodied nature of the sound, which makes the shocks one of the best, if not the best, in the first place. Next up is the Soundcore Aerofit Pro, which delivers loads of features for its $170 price tag. First and foremost, with the Aerofit Pro we get a detachable and adjustable neckband, which can provide you with the best and most secure fit possible for all sorts of physical activities. It's the highest quality and the most brilliantly designed neckband I have ever seen, which along with its detachable nature makes the Soundcore Buds a winner if you are looking for earbuds with the utmost flexibility across different use case scenarios. The IPX5 rating comes in handy too, when things get a bit sweaty or wet, so you don't need to worry about that either. The earbuds themselves are not featherweight, and while there are heavier ones in this bunch, somehow without the neckband I feel like I get some flapping action, which I did not experience with any of the other four. I reckon that the ear hooks simply cannot handle the weight of the speaker units that well. Not that it caused me any headaches in the long run, and you can always tighten up the fit by using the headband, and since the earbuds themselves don't have such a tight grip on your ears, the long-term comfort is great. And that's true whether you use the neckband or not. And that long-term comfort will come into play if we consider the 14 hours of single charge playtime, which is a close second behind what the OWS Pro can do. And you will not need the carry case to be with you all the time to turn the earbuds on and off, as you can do that by using the buttons on the buds as well. But the battery case can add an extra few charges to your earbuds, making the total use time 46 hours, which is again a close second behind Oladance. The 10 minutes of quick charging is ahead of what the OWS Pro can do, even if by just a hair. The Soundcore case is one of the smaller ones in the bunch, so carrying it around will be less of an issue for most people. And I also love that button on the front, which pops the lid open giving you hassle-free access to the buds. We still don't get wireless charging, as it's only one more who added this feature to their case. What Soundcore have added to the Aerofit Pro buds, however, is LDAC support and multipoint use, with a dedicated menu for manual switching between multiple source devices in the app. The only caveat is that the LDAC codec and multipoint cannot be used together. As I said before, the Aerofit Pro buds can be used independently, but we get no low latency mode. Not that there are any lip sync issues with movies or videos, but hardcore gamers might want to look elsewhere. But if you prefer physical buttons over touch controls, then Soundcore is your best bet. Or at least, these are the only ones in this test that come with plastic buttons instead of touch controls. The buttons are easy to use and quick to react, but unfortunately they join the ever so popular club of those with limited functionality. Only single press and double press are available, but at least those actions can be configured in the app. The long press action is reserved for powering the buds on and off, which is great, but still they could have added a triple press to not only stop me from complaining, but also to make the controls fully functional. But they didn't, so the Aerofit Pro can only be third as far as the controls are concerned and they can only better the one more and the shocks thanks to the use of tactile plastic buttons as the actual functionality is crippled in a very similar way on all three. Onto the app, it has some useful features such as the auto power of timer, find the device and the dual connections menu. We also get a volume balance slider and the switch to choose between LDAC and multipoint. On the main page there is the sound effects menu, which consists of three sound profile presets, a 5-band manual EQ, and while you may have expected to get Hear ID as a third option, you get spatial audio with head tracking instead. Which can be fun for a minute or two, but it sounds rather awful with music, so I would only recommend to use it for movies, if anything at all. And that takes us to the sound quality of those titanium-coated drivers. It is warm, punchy and powerful, while detailed and clean. Up to around 60% of volume, the tonal balance is great across the range, even if the bass gets a bit too much at times, but then the bottom octaves get tapered off to avoid distortions at higher output levels. And that makes the sound a bit thin and bright at high volumes. 
The mids are clean, detailed and forward all the way, which helps with podcasts and movies maybe, but that warmth and richness we get at lower volumes in the bass disappears into thin air as soon as we crank up the buds. And the highs, while well nuanced and detailed at moderate volumes, they can get a bit too bright and harsh if we turn it up all the way. The size of the sound stage and the precision of that image we get from the sound cores is somewhere in the middle when compared to the other four, and so is the amount of sound leakage. And as I promised earlier, now let me give you some audio samples, starting with the built-in microphones on the One More Fit S50. So this is the phone call quality you can expect from these earbuds in a quiet room. Moving on to the Clear Arc 2 Sport, this is the audio quality you can expect when making a phone call with these earbuds in a quiet room using their dual mic setup. On the Oladance OWS Pro we got 6 microphones in total and this is the audio quality you can expect when making a phone call with these earbuds in a quiet room. Moving on to our next audio sample, this is recorded through the dual microphone setup on the Shox Open Fit, so this is the phone call quality you can expect from these earbuds in a quiet room. On the Soundcore AeroFit Pro we got 4 microphones in total, and the earbuds also use an AI algorithm to enhance the voice transmission quality, so this is the sound you can expect from these earbuds during a phone call in a quiet room. Next, let's move on to a more challenging scenario. I'm outside, standing on the side of a fairly busy road, and we also got some crazy rooms today, but hey, this is what we have to work with. And this is the phone call quality you can expect from the one more as this is in its foundation. And even if the weather is far from ideal for these microphones, at least you get to experience what you might get on a bike from these earbuds when you happen to make a phone call while you are outside on the ride. So this is the phone call quality you can get from the clear uh, to the sport. The next audio sample is from the business on the Oladens OWS. So, commissions are the same for still got the three building got and then you come and trap it in the background too. Next up, this is an audio sample from the building bikes and the shocks open shit. But I better finish up this test as soon as possible because those clouds are alarmingly close and I don't wanna get wrapped. And this is the last audio sample I got for you today. This time around I'm using the microphone on the sound for Aerofit Pro. The conditions did not improve one bit, they only got worse at all. So I better get back inside because it looks like the weather remains the same for the next time. And if I had to shortly sum up what we talked about in the last 25 minutes or so, it would be something like this. For volume junkies who want both a sleek yet bulletproof design and a future-proof set of features, the Clear Arc 2 Sport is the clear way to go. For those who are not keen on high volumes, but need something low-profile, lightweight yet punchy and musical, I would recommend the Shox Open Fit. Those with a demand for flexibility across multiple use cases will probably find the modular design and the comprehensive feature set of the Soundcore Aerofit Pro irresistible. If you seek the best value along with some features the others cannot offer, and you also prefer an airy sound with a super tight fit, get the One More Fit S50. But if you have deep pockets with a strong desire for wearing something truly stylish and extremely comfortable, and you don't want to miss out on some of the best features either, then the sweet sounding Oladens OWS Pro is going to be the best candidate for you. I personally will more than likely keep using the One More S50 for podcasts and shorter workouts maybe, and the Oladens OWS Pro for casual music listening on long runs or during all day activities probably. The Shox Open Fit is my go-to choice for watching YouTube videos before going to bed with the volume turned down, while the Clear Arc 2 gets more use when I need that extra volume and dynamics in noisy places. And as soon as the weather gets better, I will definitely take out the sound core buds and snap on those neckbands for maximum safety on the bike outside. And this was my take on arguably the 5 best open ear buds out there, or at least these are my personal favorites. Let me know which one is your favorite and why in the comments down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching everyone, hope to see you all in the next one too.